So, Lynn, one area regarding implants is the success rate. I mean, it's been in the literature that uh, the implants have basically 105% success rate. And so we're essentially trying to, uh, to figure out, uh, are we really having things compared in equal grounds when we're talking about endodontics and implants? Exactly. We need to compare apples to apples, for yeah. sure. Exactly. So, so uh, you know, in the past, what we've had in terms of the success rate with implants has really been literally the outcome studies that have been based on survival versus real success. I mean, as long as the implant has been in the patient's mouth, it's been considered a success. And in fact, if the implant didn't work within a short period of time after placement, that wasn't included in the study. So it's kind of like I do the root count. If it fails within the first year, it doesn't count. So <laughs> we're going to do that later on. So, um, so let's, let's just put things on, uh, on, on equal grounds here. What is one of the studies that, in your opinion, puts things in perspective with, if we were to compare apples to apples and uh, talk about endodontic survival versus our, the strict definition that we've had for endo, which is the regeneration of the PDL, and even the patient's like, my tooth is totally fine, right. but that's a failure because on the x-ray we don't have the full regeneration of the PDL. So what do you think? What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, in my clinical experience of over 20 years as an endodontist, and I'm sure with you as well, we've seen the success rate, and we know it's higher than 95% overall. Yeah. But the best study was certainly in 2008. You might want to speak a little bit to it. The largest epidemiological yeah. study to date. That is the Saleh Rabi study that was done actually in, uh, at USC. And that study was a large epidemiological study. And you know, the one thing that is really important whenever you try to assess uh, success or failure is to really have a large sample size. And you know, you, you, you see that's all key. these studies that have like, you know, uh, 100 people or 200 people or something like that. And that's, that's okay, that's good. But the Salah Rabi study was looking at 1.6 million cases. And that's unprecedented yeah. in endodontics. And nobody's ever done anything like that. No. And so what, what, what he did and the group at USC did is they looked at these insurance claims for 1.6 million endodontic cases that were done over an eight-year period. Eight. So somebody did an endo, right. and the same patient carried the same insurance uh, uh, kind of uh, coverage for eight years, and they looked to see if eight years later um, did that tooth, uh, was there an insurance claim for that tooth being removed? And they found that in 97% of the cases, the tooth remained in the mouth. Now, that's 97% is staggering, exactly. for sure. That's, that's, that's amazing. So we've got 97% survival of the teeth retained. I mean, that's a retention. The teeth were retained. And eight years is a long time. You could say somebody's living with pain or discomfort for a year. But if somebody's yeah. living with it for eight right. years, then basically they're functional enough for them. So, uh, you know, that, that really 